Hey there friends, I'm Tim from LearnMYOG and today's video we're making quite possibly be my favorite project, the Dia Shorts. Inspired by Patagonia baggies, Dias were designed for Suplex Nylon, which is also called Taslin. It comes in lots of different colors, some have DWR, some don't. But you can also use a stretch woven fabric, or utility twill, or even natural fiber fabrics like a linen blend. Dias are great for those of you getting into making your own apparel, doesn't require a lot of fabric, and Taslin's pretty cheap comparatively. Dias have an elastic waistband with an optional drawstring that you can put on the inside or the outside. They have hand pockets sewn into the side seams, and the pocket sews into the bottom hem so it doesn't stick out the bottom of the shorts. And on the back, you have the choice between a welt pocket or a snap closure pocket. For comfort through your full range of motion, the Dias pattern includes a single piece crotch gusset. And the pair I'm making today, rather than using the tasseling fabric like I usually do, this gusset's gonna be made with a stretch woven fabric. The rest of this video goes into all the steps necessary to make your own pair of Dias following my pattern that's available on my website, LearnMYOG, you can also now pick up this pattern bundled with fabric at Ripstop by the Roll. Let's get into the build. With mirrored copies of front and back, right sides together, I'm gonna to prepare my out seam. I start at the top with a regular stitch length. I sew down to notch B. I back stitch to lock it in place, change to a basting stitch to go between B and notch C. At notch C, change back to a regular stitch length. I back stitch to start, and continue all the way down the rest of the leg. To make removal of this basting stitching easier in a later step, you can take a seam ripper and just break the stitch every six to eight stitches just on one side. Finishing off this step, I'm gonna press open these seams. I have a regular household iron set to a low heat setting. There's a towel down between my work surface and I'm not ironing on my cutting mat because you will warp these. Uh, no steam, low heat and just press these seams open. That's kind of all I do. I don't try to crease it. I just get it to, to stay open. With our seam pressed open, I'm gonna fold these right side together. So now front and back are right sides together. And I'm gonna position this seam to where it's still open. And I'm working on one side of this panel only. I'm gonna grab one of my pockets and I'm gonna line notch B and C just on one side, making sure that the seam allowance on the other side is just out of the way. Tasseling doesn't really have a right side or wrong side, so just be consistent. And the pocket I have here is right sides together with the seam allowance. So I'm actually looking at the wrong side of the pocket right now. With notches B and C aligned with this side edge and this other seam allowance out of my way, so sewing through only two layers, I'm gonna start at the top and sew a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way down the pocket. Okay, with that sewn at the 3 8 of an inch, we're gonna fold this pocket out of the way. I'm gonna isolate this side of the seam allowance, fold it open, and take my other pocket and align it to B and C, and we'll sew the exact same thing 3 8 of an inch along the pocket edge. With that seam sewn at 3 8 of an inch, now you can open both the front and back to where you're looking at the wrong sides. And when you open your pockets, there should be a gap here where your pocket opening will be created through that basting stitch between B and C in a later step. With this seam folded open, you have one pocket towards front and one pocket towards back. To get a nice finish, I just do a quick press to hold these open and pull those seams apart. To figure out where B and C are on the right side so you can use your top stitch guide, I just like to take pins and I'll find notch B and put it right through that basting stitch and then pin towards front. And I'll do that at notch B as well as notch C. So kind of look under here, find your notches and pin towards front. Then flip over to where you're on the right side of the fabric and I'm going to align my top stitch guide B and C with my pins and the waist notation up at the waistline. And then I take a pencil and I'll draw from my pin along this edge. Okay, between B and C with our top stitch line drawn, we're gonna sew through front and only one layer of pocket. Make sure that back and the other layer of pocket stay out of your way. 
and all this is pulled nice and flat. I'm using a color match thread. I'm gonna start at the out seam here and do a little bar tack, stitch down this and a little bar tack. Okay, so this is front and I top stitch this and it's a color match thread so I'll show you the back where it's a little easier to see. Looking at the back, this is front, one layer of pocket and you can see the contrasting thread and I never cross this middle seam that's been basted, which is the out seam. So I really like having a little phone sleeve in my left front leg pocket. So from the right sides out, this is my left leg and the phone pocket's gonna be installed to the pocket liner that's folded against the back panel. The phone pocket, you know, I give you this, this shape, but you don't have to use this shape. You can use really whatever you want and you can enlarge this to, for a bigger phone. But kind of the way I size this is I just lay my phone on the table and this, it's hard to see it, I know, but I take the width of the phone and I just add three quarters to an inch of width on the fabric. So this is four inches wide. And uh, the height of it, I just kind of gauge based on how the phone's gonna sit inside the, uh, inside the pocket sleeve. Uh, you can do this on an angle, which makes getting it in and out of your pocket a little easier. All right, so I have my little pocket prepared. I just did a quick hem across the top and then I just a single fold quarter inch hem on this side. Um, I don't usually use a stretch fabric for this. Uh, I usually just use the same material, but this was a scrap I just had sitting on the desk, so I'll use it up. So we align notch E down here at the bottom. That'll give you the height you want. And then all this excess scrap at the bottom, I'll just cut off later. To attach the pocket, I, first I stitch along this outside edge of the pocket liner. That holds the iPhone pocket kind of in place. And then I'll set my phone in there and make sure I'll actually put my phone underneath the pocket and I'll just kind of position it. If I need to pleat it or whatever at the bottom, I'll just do that and uh, that'll give it a little bit of volume. It makes getting the phone in, in and out a lot easier than having this super taut. Okay, so you can see you've got my uh, stitch lines here in the pocket. The sleeve is open at the top. I went ahead and sealed it at the bottom so you can see that. And, uh, and the phone will slide very easily right into that pocket. Okay, so we're ready to close in the two sides of the pockets. What I like to do is I just open the whole thing up to where the two pocket liners are on one side. And I just take pins and put it right in the middle of the panel to, uh, to hold those in place directly over top of each other. And then all we need to do is seal this pocket in and I'm gonna serge it. If you don't have a serger, just sew this at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and then use a zigzag stitch to clean up the outside edge. If you have a serger, uh, you can do the same thing. You could stitch it and then serge it. I'm just gonna go ahead and use a four thread overlock stitch and I'll sew this with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'll do this edge, the outside edge. The bottom, you can choose whether you do it or not. I'm actually just gonna do a straight stitch here instead of serging it because I don't want the bulk of this bottom seam in the hem later. Now I'm just gonna serge the outside edge as well as the short edge of the pocket and you don't need to close in the top, that'll get closed in with the, with the uh, waistband later. My two pocket liners have a little bit of space that's free here, so I can just kind of fold this whole fabric out of the way and surge right over the edge. If you don't have that space, just go ahead and stop your stitching at the out seam. Over here on the side of the pocket, just a quick tip, you might feel when this comes down the edge of the pocket, so I'm at, here's the waistband. As I kind of wipe my finger down the side of this along the seam allowances, you'll feel where it doesn't really sit very flat right down here at the bottom. What you can do is you just fold the pocket up out of the way and you'll see that the two seam allowances are kind of full, one of them's kind of folded. You can just take your scissors and within this 5 8 of an inch seam allowance along the out seam, just make a small clip and that will allow this seam allowance to sit flat. And when you fold the pocket back down, it'll feel a lot more flat here. Okay, so I'm ready to finish the out seam of the shorts on both sides. And you'll notice at the very top, the seam allowances are folded away from each other. To get this inside edge folded over to the outside edge, similar to the bottom, you just find the top of the pocket liners and make a small snip. That way the seam allowance of front can fold over and this will all lay a little bit more flat. Then with the serger or your zigzag stitch, just finish this out seam all the way down. The pocket liner is quite, quite long and deep. 
Uh, that's so that this bottom edge can get caught inside the hem of your shorts and hold it in place. Uh, so to keep it from being just too deep for your hand and for whatever you put in your pocket, across notches D and E, just run a top stitch and that'll close the pocket in. So if you need to find those notches again, just use your paper pattern, line it up at the top and remark D and E so that you can sew across that. Okay, with the out seams finished, now we wanna give the outside a nice top stitch finish. Open your panels so they're right sides out. I'm gonna move the out seam seam allowance towards the back panel. Now making sure to always just sew through the back and that seam allowance and never your pocket liner. Go ahead and run a top stitch along the whole out seam at a quarter of an inch. At the machine, I'm gonna use the edge of my foot as my guide right along the out seam and I can feel underneath the back panel the seam allowances and I've double checked that my pocket liners are over here under front and I'm not gonna sew through my pocket. As you top stitch, just make sure you pull all this kind of out of the way and just keep checking that, you're, that the seam allowances are nicely folded towards the back. All right, so we got our out seam top stitched and looking at the right side of the fabric. Now what I wanna do is I wanna open up my pocket. So I got a seam ripper. This should be really easy to get into this because you used a long stitch length, the basting stitch. If you snip through some of those threads, it'll be really easy to pull the, the bottom thread out. Okay, so with my pocket that's been opened, it's easy to get my hand in there. For a reinforcement at notch B and at notch C, just make a small bar tack through front and your pocket liners. And that'll reinforce at B and especially at C where you're putting your hand in the pocket all the time. Okay, so I'm gonna start working on the welt pocket. I'm running pretty low on interfacing, so I'm just gonna make these two scraps work. So with the, with the interfacing, you need to use steam. So I've got my, again, my household iron. It's set on still a fairly low heat setting. It's well below cotton, but it's just enough to produce steam on its own. And to help it, I have a piece of just wet paper towel. And I, again, I don't wanna, I don't wanna melt this, uh, the nylon. So I just run the wet paper towel over it and use that to produce more steam. That's really all it takes to get that fusible to uh, stick down. What you want to do is one big piece. Hopefully you don't have to do what I'm doing here. Again, I just had some scraps left over. So we'll call that good for interfacing the welt. So to get this kind of back flat, what you can do is you can just turn the steam off, turn the heat down, and just do a quick press on it. Well, I'm guessing someone's gonna ask, the interfacing I'm using is PLF 36 Fusible Interfacing from Pellin. So with this interface, just use your paper pattern and at the drill marks for where you're gonna do your welt, just go ahead and mark those on the interface side. And then you wanna do the same thing, you wanna mark the back panel where you're going to install the welt pocket. I'm just gonna be installing one, it's gonna be on my right leg on the back. Okay, so I positioned my welt on the back and uh, I pinned it in place. So you can see I drew the lines on the interfacing and there was a line on back. And all I did was I folded the welt to where I could see the two end points of the drill points. And I aligned that, the uh, white line on back right in between the two black lines on the welt. So if you could see through this, there'd be three parallel lines. So this is where precision is key. You wanna sew exactly drill point to drill point in a straight line. So make sure you sink your needle on one drill point, back stitch and sew straight across, and then end at this drill point and back stitch to lock your stitches. And you'll have two parallel lines here. So let me show you what I did here. There's orange stitching on top of the black pen, which may be hard to see, but it goes from drill point to drill point. And then on the inside, the wrong side of back, you can see the two parallel lines in black stitching. So now we need to cut the welt open and there is a specific pattern that you wanna use. So if you pull back from the two end points, your two drill points about half an inch on both sides, draw a little mark and then draw a diagonal from that mark towards each drill point. And it'll give you this little triangle that's gonna stick out later, like so. Okay, so you got two inset triangles 
and then from those two inner points, draw a straight line. I'm using my tailoring ruler to make sure that I'm directly in the middle of these two lines. I know that it's three quarters of an inch, so I'm just bisecting those two. And my dots were, were close enough for the visual purposes, but I wanna get that line exactly uh, in position there in the middle. Okay, so now what you wanna do is you want to cut this open following your, the path that we just drew. What I like to do is I'll use a rotary knife just to get started, and I'll cut right into the middle line here, not to the corner, but just get the line started. And then I'll use scissors to finish. So I cut my middle line, and then with a really sharp pair of scissors, you go from the inner set point out to your drill mark, and you wanna, you wanna cut as close to that drill point as you can without going past it and without breaking your stitch line. Alrighty, so to make this uh, really crisp, you can do this with your fingers or you can even use the iron. What you really wanna do is just press all these seams open before you go ahead and fold it inside out. So I'm just finger pressing everything to be really crisp and clean. I even do these inner seams where I open the seam and uh, finger press those flat. And more preparation here will get you a better result. So again, just finger press this, open the seams and finger press those. Get nice crisp corners over here at the edges. Now what you wanna do is you wanna fold the whole thing, this whole welt, towards the inside. Okay, so once I'm kind of happy with what it looks like on the back side, I'm actually gonna flip it to the front side. And this is where I'm gonna check the corners over here and just kind of massage those, stretch a little bit, kind of pull the fabric to get nice clean corners. They don't have to be perfect at this step because we will top stitch it later. And I'll just run the iron over that a little bit just to get it to set. And again, be careful with the heat. I like to use a little bit of heat and then I use my fingers to kind of hold it all in place while it cools. So that looks pretty good from the right side. Now we're gonna flip it all back to the wrong side. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna close this in with the bottom portion of the, of the welt. So what you do is you fold it up like an accordion shape. And so you'll basically create a little Z shape and then bring it up and then bring it back down to uh, just come up and uh, close in that gap. You don't want them to overlap, you just want it to come up and close a little bit. Finger press that flat. What we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda hold all this in place and we're holding this little triangle underneath and I fold back out of the way, flip it, where you see the crease right here in the triangle, we're gonna sew a straight line right here and that's gonna hold this accordion shape but we haven't sewn through back. So we're going through the triangle and the Z, the Z accordion shape of the welt. And you do that on both sides to hold this shape. All right, so this is the bottom thread of those little triangles sewed. You can see the stitching right inside that little triangle, I hope. And on the outside, there's no top stitching yet, but you've got a nice opening to that welt pocket. So to create the pocket bag for your back pocket, we've got this kind of weird shape. The two sides that curve in will be towards the waistband. So the square side at the bottom, just line up to the bottom of the welt that you just created. And what you wanna do is you fold this whole thing open and the get back folded out of the way. So this line that you see here is my stitch line from creating the welt. And I'm gonna sew through the bag, the pocket bag, the welt, and this basically along this seam without stitching through back. So again, I'm just gonna sew directly across this and that'll hold the bag to the welt. So this is your opening here. And then this is the bag that's below that line. What I wanna do is I wanna make sure that this bag doesn't billow out of the top. One way of doing that is to understitch the pocket bag to the seam you just created. So there's the seam I just created. I'm gonna grab that seam and open it back up. And then I'm gonna fold just the pocket bag up. And then I'm gonna run a top stitch, an edge stitch right along that seam to, to basically sew 
this bag on top of the seam allowance that was just finished. And that's called an understitch. Okay, so to size your pocket bag itself, what I like to do is from the, from the right side of back, I'll pass a ruler as if it's my hand coming into the pocket. So I'm at six inches from the opening of the welt pocket. I'll kind of come over to the edge and I'll just make a mark. I'll come over to this edge and make a little mark. And that'll be my fold line for the pocket itself. Along that line there of those two marks at six inches, I'll fold the pocket bag up. And now this is a little bit taller here because it's going to get caught into the hem later on. What you want to do is grab the pocket liner and the top of the welt and grab those two layers and again fold back out of the way. Lift this and I'm going to go sew through all these layers. Right, so it's pocket liner, the welt, and back just at the seam allowance that was created when the opening. I'm not sewing anywhere along back panel, just these layers here. Okay, so I made a stitch right here. I followed my black line just inside it of that seam allowance and stitched through all those layers. And that gives you a nice finished edge at the top of the welt pocket on the inside. You can see that stitch line right here. So now all I need to do is I'm going to use a serger again and I'm going to finish these raw edges. If you don't have a serger, just use a zigzag or an overcast stitch to finish those edges in. So remember, this top edge will get hemmed in later, so you don't need to do anything with the top of this, and you can just clip these serge tails, the chain off. At the bottom, you can't just cut this chain short. What you need to do is you need to finish this. So I use this large hand sewing needle. I pass the chain tails into itself, and that'll hold it in place and finish off that serge to where it doesn't unravel. If you just cut the chain, it could out unravel on you. And then once it's inside itself, you can just cut the uh, a little bit of that excess off. And that finishes the welt pocket. You have a nice pocket there, and it's all finished. If you want to, to reinforce it, you can put bar tacks right along these little edges here on the sides. So recently in 2023, I updated the pattern instructions for the DS. The order of the operations for installing the gusset is a little bit different and a little bit easier. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sew the center back, and we're not gonna sew down this inseam. 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna sew it twice for durability. There's once, I'm gonna sew the exact same thing again, just right on top of that stitch line, or just inside of it towards the, into the seam allowance. And notice I did not sew this inseam yet. I just did the back seam. So now what I wanna do is I wanna finish that raw edge with the serger, or again, zigzag, or an overcast stitch, just to finish this raw edge along the back. Okay, so along this back seam, the convention for men's pants is that your top stitching and the seam allowance underneath will fold to the left side of the pants, so towards your left leg. I'm just going to move my seam allowance over to the left and I'm going to run a top stitch along this center back seam at a quarter of an inch. Okay, so I did the front the exact same way, and it's finished, and I'm going to top stitch it again. It's the seam should go to the left leg. Alrighty, so we've got center front and center back are stitched closed, and they're top stitched with a nice quarter inch seam allowance that aligns pretty well on the same side. Now what you want to do is you want to get to your center, kind of fold front out of the way to where you're looking at the right side of back. Okay, so the alignment of the gusset is important. Make sure you use your double notches and align them to the back leg. The center line of your gusset should align to center back. And we'll sew from the right leg towards center back and then continue to the left leg. All right, so my gusset is attached to back and is fully finished on the inside. And then I also went ahead and top stitched it. I top stitched the seam allowance to the gusset. And uh, now what you want to do is you want to do basically the exact same thing, but you're going to line right sides together with front. Okay, so now I have the front attached to gusset. Now this isn't top stitched down yet, so how do you get to this? Now that it's a big tube, how do you top stitch it? You just start on one side and you end up sewing and moving all this excess fabric out of the way so you can just get to the seam and just keep pulling it, kind of pu pu pulling it apart so that you get a nice top stitch here. But you just kind of have to manipulate the fabric as you go. Uh, 
and I got one little tuck, but it's right at center front and it'll be basically in your crotch. So I'm not gonna redo it because you won't ever see it. So that gives it a, you know, just a really nice finish along the insides of the pant. Okay, so for the buttonholes, first thing you wanna do is get another piece of interfacing. This is just a small scrap I have. It was about two inches tall by just under three inches wide. And on the wrong side of front, I'm just going to put this up at the top edge and it's centered at the center front line. And I'm just going to go ahead and fuse that down. So just like before, I've got a towel down. I'm gonna put a wet paper towel over the top of this and with a medium to hot iron, hopefully just get that to steam through. And don't go too crazy on the heat. And that's stuck down now, which is great. Okay, so then what you wanna do is you need to have your buttonholes marked. Okay, so the way this works is the top edge is gonna fold down by 3 8 of an inch. So we go ahead and mark that. The casing for your elastic will be at one and a quarter inches. And then evenly spaced on center front, this will be one inch spacing between your buttonholes. So you want half inch from this way, half inch on this way. And you just mark a buttonhole in between those two fold lines. Should be about half inches tall. And uh, they should be one inch apart, aligned to center front. Ignore your top stitching line, just go by the seam of center front. Now note that my holes are gonna be on the inside of the pants, right? So this is the right side. When it's folded down, the, the outside will be clean. The drawstring will be on the inside. If you want your buttonholes on the outside of the pants, then you would put these buttonholes down below your one and a quarter inch fold line, just by about an, an eighth of an inch or so, and just space them out there. All right, so I've got the little B05 set up for a buttonhole, and I've done a couple practice runs. Eventually, you just gotta trust that you'll get it right and go for it. Okay, so to open the buttonholes, I like to start with a seam ripper and I go from the front side and just open a small hole and then I'll finish that with scissors. So I just get it started with the seam ripper so I can get my scissors in there and be a little more precise. And that way I don't snip through the ends of the buttonhole. Okay, so I'll be honest, I'm not the best at hemming. I'll show you what I do, and if you have a better way of doing it, let me know down in the comments. So the way this works is the top edge is gonna be finished, so it's a 3 8 of an inch fold down, and then the whole thing folds down by an inch and a quarter, and that should line up on the side with the notches and where the top of the pocket is. If you need to, you can trim a little bit off the top of this pocket, especially as it comes around towards center front, just to keep it from having to fold over. The way I like to do this is I start with that full inch and a half fold down, okay? And then I will pin this and then iron it. And then I'll tuck the 3 8 of an inch to create the finished edge. I have my pockets lined up into that fold line, but I trimmed them if they were a little long. And then at the back where you have a welt pocket, make sure you're catching the pocket bag in your hemline. So I'm actually now gonna go to my ironing board. I'm just gonna press all the way around this to crease this top edge. Now what we need to do is just take this raw edge and fold it under for a clean finish. And I'll just put more pins in it to hold it exactly flat. I don't wanna take the pins out now because I don't want this top edge to curl. So I wanna do this clean finished edge first and pin it, and then I'll actually sew it with all these pins in place. Okay, so I've got a lot of pins in this now. And uh, as I said, this is just the way that I found to be able to consistently do this and get a clean result. So if you've got a better way, let me know. So remember, we're making an elastic channel. You need to leave yourself a hole in the back. So I'm just gonna kinda make some marks here, and that'll tell me where to start and stop. So that gap is, uh, I don't know, probably three inches. Yep, yeah, pretty bang on three inches. And that should be enough room to fish a piece of elastic through that channel. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my machine to sew this whole thing with a one and one eighth inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna top stitch it so that I get my orange thread on the right side of the fabric. Okay, so using my little hem guide and some tape, I set up a seam guide and it's one eighth of an inch away from my needle. And I found some orange thread on a bobbin already, so that means that I can actually sew this right side or uh, wrong side up, and the orange thread will be on the other side. So make sure again that you start off at that notch, leave yourself a gap at center back, and we're just going to sew around it.
Alrighty, so here's the elastic I use. Um, I just bought a bunch of this on Amazon. It's three quarter of inch non-roll elastic. One inch is probably better for these because of the size of the channel, but I have so much of this, that's just what I keep using. I basically marked a piece that was about 85% of my waist and I kind of wrapped it around my waist, overlapped a little bit to check how it fit. That was a little tight. So I added an inch or inch and inch and a half onto it and checked that again. And just kind of did that around my waist until I found a kind of a comfortable fit. And then I cut that. And that was about two and a half inches less than my waist diameter where I'm gonna wear the shorts. So if you're looking for uh, the little tools that I use, I have no idea how to pronounce that, Hoyles Drawstring Threader. This comes with a number of little tools in it. And uh, pretty much the only one I ever use is this guy. And it's kind of like a clothes pin. Um, safety pin works just as well, honestly. But yeah, you just grab it like that. And that holds onto it. So you just uh, milk it through, push it, and pull. Okie doke. So I got my two ends through the back. Now to join these, all you do is you overlap them flat. And then with a zigzag stitch or whatever, bar tack, zigzag, you just connect this together. And I overlapped it by about an inch. So I took that an inch into account when I measured around my waist so that this isn't gonna be tighter than when I measured it earlier. Obviously, double, double check that you don't have any twist in your elastic around the band before you join these together. Okay, so I hope you can see that. Just made a bunch of really big zigzags to sew that on flat. You wanna kinda of dress this to where it's nice and flat and you will tuck and stitch. Here's a tip before we move to the next step. You want to make sure that the waistband is evenly gathered all the way around the elastic. So what I do is I grab the shorts itself and I just kind of stretch out the waistband multiple times in multiple directions and evenly gather all this fabric around the elastic. As you're stretching the waistband out and happy with the gathering of that fabric, you can use clips or pins at four or six locations evenly spaced just to hold everything in place. For a really nice professional finish, I like to sew through the waistband and the elastic. While it makes replacing the elastic a little more difficult in the future should you need to, it evenly disperses all of that gathering so you don't get bunching in various locations. And it also prevents the elastic from twisting or rolling inside the channel. So when you sew it, I'll show you in the video, but you have to pre-stretch and you sew, and then you pre-stretch and sew. Let's talk about the leg hems. I do them the exact same way that I did the waist hem, except it's a 5 8 double rolled hem. So you fold up 5 8 and then again 5 8 The raw edge is inside here. And you wanna make sure that you catch the bottom of the pocket into that second roll. I'm gonna iron it to get it to all lay nice and flat, and then we'll sew it with a half inch hem allowance. Okie doke, so I adjusted my uh, seam guide to just past a half an inch, basically a half an inch. Okay, so check it out. We got ourselves some nice hem lines here. Nice looking hem and on the inside. Stitch is pretty good. So if you have a zigzag machine and you wanted to, just to keep a little bit more stretch in this, uh, if you were doing a stretch gusset here, is when you get to this material, just do a zigzag across that, real narrow zigzag, and that'll retain more stretch. But for my purposes, the straight stitch will be fine. So I re-ironed my hems, gave it a really nice crisp finish there. And before really finishing, I think the last kind of thing to do is run a, a drawstring around the waistband. I happen to have this uh, micro cord from Atwood Rope, and it's a pretty good match. If you're looking for uh, something to match Ripstop by the Rolls burnt orange tasselin, but I actually happen to keep all my old shoelaces and I have these orange and black shoelaces that have a little bit of stretch to them and they are pretty much a dead ringer. So I'm gonna use that. From this Bodkin toolkit that I showed you earlier, I'm actually gonna use this pink, I don't know, rope thingy. So what you do with this is you feed the, uh, the blunt end through your drawstring channel. Make sure your cord is through the end. Went ahead and used this and I pulled the cord all the way through. And what I like to do is I actually overlap my cord. What I want is when the cord comes this way from this side of the pants, I want it to skip a hole and come out the other side. So then the cord that I ran into the channel, I'm actually going to back up and go the other way. 
and have it come out its other side. So you can see there that uh, shoelace I happen to have is a pretty good match. So that's how I make Dias, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed these patterns. A lot of people have made these, they're really great shorts. I've got several pairs of them. And with the stretch gusset, it's a kind of a cool addition to it. 